Hello and welcome. I'm your host, second year member of the Merrimack Lions Club, returning Lion of the Year and defending Chili Champ of the Lions Chili Cook-Off, Adam Jump. I want to thank the Merrimack Lions Club and the Amherst Lions Club for putting on this special, special first ever virtual chili event. So let's break down the competition. We got two categories. We got the individuals and we got the Lions Club themselves. Each contestant's going to have their time at judges table where they're going to pitch their story and their chili to the judges, talk about themselves, talk about their recipe, and then from there the judges will deliberate live at judges table, give live feedback, and then we'll go to the scorecard from there. They're going to be judged on criteria of five categories, taste, smell, presentation, creativity, and heat. Heat is going to be one we're going to focus on. So, and then from there, everyone can find a description below where you can go and get a donation where you can purchase the recipe and support the Lions Sight and Hair and Foundation of New Hampshire. All proceeds will benefit um, that charity of our choice. So, all contestants, best of luck, and let's keep the quality high. <laughs> Now cooking, since the age of 16, and from the hometown of Salem, New Hampshire, graduate of the Johnson & Wales Culinary Institute, co-founder of Cracked Kitchen and Coffee, breakfast sandwiches of the highest quality, Alan Fratty, welcome. Thank you. Our second judge is 2020 New Hampshire Lodging Restaurant Chef of the Year, and Executive Chef of the Coppador in Bedford, New Hampshire, Jay Smith. Jay, thank you. <laughs> and finally, we have a certified Northeast Barbecue Society in Kansas City Barbecue Society judge and pit master and owner of Up In Your Grill Food Truck and Catering, Chef Dan DeCourcy. Dan, thank you. <laughs> And our first contestant in the individual category is Colin Schofer. He's got chili number two. He's got chili number two. So when you're going on your donation card, go to chili number two, and this is going to be the contestant. Colin is from Connecticut, but is living in Hollis, New Hampshire. And he is uh, investment management, and in his spare time, he likes to do a little hiking and obviously kicking up a nice chili. Beware of the dog. Okay. <laughs> so, Colin, go ahead and tell the judges about the chili. Uh, so, uh, in a former life, uh, I was a musician and I toured the country a lot. And uh, as most musicians go, uh, we didn't have any money, and so uh, uh, I knew how to make chili, not, not well back then at all. But uh, the other guys in the band did not know how to cook anything, so I kind of became <laughs> the chef. And uh, uh, over time, we just kept, I kept making it more elaborate discovering what worked, what didn't work. Uh, and then, you know, fast forward, uh, after doing that for years, I started my professional life uh, in investment management. Uh, a lot of the companies that I worked for had uh, chili contests. And so I didn't enter for years, and then all of a sudden, you know, a friend of mine just kind of pushed me into it, and I said, all right, and uh, I won. And so from there, I just started doing more chili contests at, at work, and I did pretty well. And I've done one other actual chili contest, which was the one last year in, in Brookline. And so uh, my wife has been kind of cheerleading me, telling me, you should keep, keep entering. So I said, all right, why not? Fantastic. Now, now, now Colin Jay, if you don't mind, take your portion and then share it to the judges to your left and right. And tell us a little bit of some of those condiments you have chosen to accompany your chili. Sure. So I, you know, what I do is, is I have uh, six condiments. Uh, Essentially, for, for this chili is very good with chips. It, it doubles as a really good dip. So I have a Frito-based chip as well as a multi-grain uh, scoop chip that they tend to, to taste pretty good with it. Uh, mild cheddar, uh, although personally I don't like cheese and chili, I, I, but that, I know a lot of people do, so I included that. In case it's too spicy, I included some sour cream. And then the uh, and jalapenos as well. And then the final ingredient is a concoction that I made up myself that I call devil's dust. Okay. And uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a combination of different kinds of peppers that I toasted and ground up 
And uh, if you like it a little spicier, you can mix some of that in, and it'll add a little extra. But I suggest trying it without it first. Okay. All right. Awesome All right. presentation. All right. So let's let the judges dig in, and let's get their their first hand reaction and see see what they think of your devil dust. Like it so far. Okay. So uh, a little bit of everything, way you intend it. Uh, Honestly, the way I eat it, I don't put any of that stuff in, I, except the red onions. I like the red onions. But I wanted everyone to have variety because everyone's got different tastes, and mm -hmm. so I yep. make it to my tastes, but this allows you to make it a little bit more to, to yours. Got it. All right. I mean, right off the bat, I think the heat level in it's great, as is, without even a little bit of the devil's dust or the jalapeno. I mean, I like spicy food, so I probably am going to try it with both those things in there as well. But <laughs> Yeah. It's got like a solid balanced flavor, even without. I put a little bit more heat into it this time than I do when I make it at home for my family because they won't eat it otherwise. Uh, and I figured this was hopefully just enough heat, and if you want more, you can you can mm. add it. I agree. Perfect amount of heat. It's very hearty. Perfect for a winter day, as, as we have out here today. So I'm enjoying it. Thank All you. right, fantastic. Well, you heard it here from the judges' call, and I think that's a great show to start off tonight's event. Um, we'll let the judges finish their last few bites and move on to the next contestant. Thank you so much, Colin. All right, next up for the contestant in our individual category is Sean Madison. He's got chili number four. So when you go to make your donations, make sure you check, uh, click in on chili number four if you want this specific recipe. Now, Sean, why don't you go ahead and present your chili to your judges? Sean is from Doylestown, Pennsylvania. And in his hobby, free time, he can find hunting and fishing and making chili. So Sean, why don't you tell us what makes your chili different from everyone else here today? Okay, uh, probably the main thing that makes this different from everybody else's is this is deer. This isn't uh, any store-bought meat. Well, there is store-bought meat in that, but the primary ingredient is deer. I started making this about 10 years ago when I was living in North Carolina. Uh, so inspiration-wise, I, I went through probably a half dozen different chili recipes, took what I liked from some, took what I liked from others, put them all together, and this is what it ended up being. It's not as spicy as the original recipe was because that was almost inedible. <laughs> <laughs> but it's spicier than what I, I usually make. I usually enter it in uh, the Brookline chili cook-off. Okay. Past years it's been too hot. This past year it wasn't hot enough, so hopefully this year it's... Just yeah, right. Just right. <laughs> now, may well, I ask, the deer and the chili, did you happen... Uh, the deer, this deer. Yeah. deer and chili I got about six weeks ago in <laughs> Pennsylvania. So. I think that makes a big difference. <laughs> <That's fresh. laughs> Very impressive. Uh, only condiments I brought with it are uh, cilantro and cheese. That's usually all I put it in. And I don't put cilantro in it directly because some people yeah, have it. Cilantro is an interesting choice with the chili, for sure. Yeah, I think it, yeah. personally, I think it adds to it. All right. Don't say I forgot. One other thing, it's not hot enough. This is my hot sauce. Okay. I make every year from the garden. Okay. That'll add a little bit. It'll change the flavor profile a little bit because it's smoked. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, that'll add heat to it too if you like. I love that. What can we find in that bottle? I love when you bottle up your own sauce. So this year, my ghost chilies, ghost peppers didn't come through. So that's primarily habanero, jalapeno, cayenne, and cubanella, and then sweet peppers as the filler. Uh, garlic and shallots, smoke all the smoke all the vegetables together, and then there's mustard, uh, apple cider vinegar, brown sugar, oh, and all the chilies I pickle in just white vinegar for about a month before I smoke them. Wow, awesome. So you say the hot sauce was in here? No, that hot sauce. Okay, so that added after. Yep, that's you can add that after if okay. you like. This is my first time ever having uh, venison chili. Very, very good. This is the best way I like to introduce people to venison. Yeah. You can make it with, I've made it with turkey though, too. Okay. Beef, whatever you can yeah. have. Awesome. Mm. Great consistency though. Yeah, in the, the body. It's right in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. It's right in the mouth. Smells right. great. I can, oh, I can hit, hit it in from mm. the nose right here. The hot sauce is nice. It's a little sweet on the first. Yep. The initial sort of. Yeah. Yeah, hit you late. The, yeah, well, I'm talking about his uh, oh, the sauce. Oh, I have tried that. Yeah. Yeah, I get some of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. not the, that's not the best years. I like it. When I get that just right, it usually comes in waves. Yeah. And it'll get sweet heat and then a little bit of smoky on the back. Yeah. You have an outstanding crock pot, too, because this is still 
piping hot. This is really hot. Yeah, mm -hmm. temperature-wise. Oh, I <laughs> unplugged it, plugged it into my truck, and kept. Oh yeah. Sure. Oh, oh, that's that's nice. good. I've run into the issue before going. Yeah. All right. Well, Sean, I think uh, the judges got there tasteful. Let's let them finish up their scorecard. Okay. Thank you very much for your chili. Okay. And next up, we have Reed Flowers, chili number six. Reed Flowers has been a part of the Amherst Lions Club for six years. He says his favorite moment in the Lions Club is handing out food during the Christmas holidays. <laughs> now, Reed, that, that apron is almost as hot as my shirt I got on. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so the first and most important thing is there is no Tabasco in that <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, it's an ancient, what I call it, uh, honest Texas chili recipe from 1987 that uh, <laughs> I work for a large corporation down in North Carolina. And uh, the corporation no longer exists. In those days, we were consolidating, um, and we uh, consolidated a number of different uh, facilities to Durham, New Hampshire, okay. uh, North Carolina, Texas, mm -hmm. Thailand. <laughs> so we had chili contests as well, but this chili um, was kind of it kind of grew out of that combination. So, and one of the things I like about it is it's adjustable. You can, I, I use my own habanero peppers that I grow, and, uh, and I use a mixture of regular chili powder and chipotle chili powder. And if you put in a little bit of chipotle, it gets a little hotter. If you put in one habanero, it's a little hotter yet. If you put in two, it's real hot, right? Or you can mix and match with uh, uh, jalapenos or, or whatever. Um, so this one, I think, is kind of a medium, you know, like, like the other gentleman said, my family can eat it and they don't complain, uh, but still, there's, there's some heat there. I put uh, cheese and cilantro on top of it, but that's kind of an extra plus for you guys. I, uh, you know, I like it, but it's not something that, you know, we just make it and eat it, you know, in the, in the wintertime, uh, mostly plain, but always with cornbread. Some of the ingredients uh, were uh, it evolved over time. Like once I grabbed the cinnamon by mistake instead of chili powder, but I thought it's not bad. It was actually one of the first things I picked up on the yeah. smell. That yeah. was like the cinnamon. And, and I thought so too. <laughs> I thought the exact same thing. Yeah, like, and I liked it. It was. Uh, I liked and cinnamon and chili. Yeah, it was, it was, like, it was nice. a beautiful aroma. It was a mistake, you know, at first, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, about three years ago, but then. A lot of great recipes come out from mistakes, trust me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> great texture, uh, mouthfeel. I like the smokiness too. Yeah, you definitely pick up on that mm. quite a bit. Yeah. The Chipotle. Uh, yeah. Chili pot. Well, Reed, I think you presented a nice chili and represented the club very nice. Right Thank you so go. much. Thank All you. right, and next up we have Brian Foster. Brian Foster is from Ashby, Thank Massachusetts. For his hobby, he's a foodie. You can find him in the kitchen, always experimenting with different recipes and food techniques he tells me. So he's got a great chili with a nice double bowl presentation here. I like the looks of that off the rip. So this is, um, this is number three. This is a lamb chili. Um, not an old recipe. Started, I just got it made this weekend. <laughs> the first time. I've made chili plenty of times, but this is the first time I've done a lamb chili. Um, uh, inspiration is probably the lamb. I have uh, my family and I big lamb uh, favorites. So I actually started entering this contest thing. It was a chowder contest. I was going to do a uh, shepherd's pie inspired chowder, and then I realized I do chili. <laughs> so I just figured I'd use the lamb for the chili. So uh, yeah, I used um, uh, garbanzo beans as opposed to some of the more traditional beans that go in chili. I like uh, it holds their consistency a little bit better. Uh, instead of getting too mushy. Um, it's a uh, uh, Havarti lime and cilantro topping with just corn chips. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Good job. Okay, great. What, what number? Number three. three. All right, out. It looks great. Thanks. Great presentation. Yeah, I, can, I mean, if you, if you hadn't mentioned it, you, you could still know that's lamb for sure. As soon as you smell it, it's like, is that a great lamb? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I also tried it with a uh, cheddar uh, instead, but I like the creaminess of the whole, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of cuts, yeah. you know, blend, really blends in nice it with does. the does. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. I like the option with the chip again. Uh, I think it's a great vessel to use instead of the spoon. Mm -hmm. It's always fun when you can play with your food a little bit and experience some different textures as well with the chip. It was a toss up between the chips and oyster crackers, but the chips are the way to go. Yeah. You can find Brian, chili number three. If you're watching this online, he's going to be chili number three when you go to look to make your donations on our website. You like this chili, you like what you see. This is chili number three. Brian, thank you so much. All right, and our next contestant for our individual is going to be Susan Doyon and her husband, Peter. Uh, Susan is from Hookset, New Hampshire, and she's a real estate agent and in the kitchen, kitchen on a spare time serving up a beautiful chili. And this one looks a little bit different than the rest here, Susan. It is. So you've got a nice story to tell, it looks like, yeah. Yeah, great presentation, I've got to say that. Look at this. Great. Festa is the word. <laughs> All right. Okay. The dance floor is yours, Sue. Well, I'll need the dance floor. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoy my white bean chicken enchilada chili. A little different from the red. I like chili, yes I do. Once you try this, you will too. <laughs> Looking for something different than red, I experimented with green and white instead. My family liked it and I, so did my friends. I gave it to my coworkers and this is what they said. Go girl, go girl, this is great. Go back home and make another batch, can't wait. <laughs> so anyways, I know traditional red chili is the norm. You can get uh, white bean salsa verde chicken once in a while. I like it, my friends tend to like it because it is different. It's very easy. Um, it's got, uh, you know, I, I, I don't slave in the kitchen with chopping up all the little bits and this and that. I do have a jar of roasted salsa verde that I do dump in there that adds the kick to it. Um, and oftentimes I'll add a little roasted cumin I like the roasted flavor, um, and I don't know what else to tell you, but everybody seems to like it. Is that pulled chicken in there? Yeah, it's a roasted chicken that I shred up. I mean, you can use chunk chicken, however you like it, whatever you prefer. I did add the uh, sour cream, cilantro, and pepper jack cheese. Um, that's how I serve it, so that's how I wanted to serve it to you folks. Right. And if you'd like to squirt some lime in there, have at it. We got a you taste yeah. the little heat going on <laughs> on the back end of it. A little bit of heat is very fresh tasting, yeah. very light, very well balanced to the... I figured that not everybody likes to, um, you know, eat a bite of chili and then burn their mouth and not be able to taste the rest of it. So mm -hmm. I didn't overpower it with heat, but um, for myself, I like it. My husband... The more hotter, the more better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> I like white chilies. I mean, we make them at the restaurant occasionally. I mean, it's, it, like you said, it's a nice change from uh, the red-based, tomato-based chili. Um, the lime, to me, in this is huge. Like, you need, you need the lime because you need the acid in there because you don't, you're not getting it from the tomatoes. Right. Like regular chili, so mm -hmm. the, the lime was like an A-plus for the, on the garnish. I mean, it definitely adds depth. Thank you. To the, uh, to the whole bowl. Yeah, I like the, uh, the heat starts off really slow, then subtly you know, comes up and, and you start to get a little, like you said, late, which yeah, is, which is uh, very complex, nice heat. I should mention that the little cornbread, jalapeno cornbread, that's, is on paper, so don't eat the paper. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 Well, Susan, I think you put up a great product here for well, the thanks. judges, and we see something a little different here tonight, so it's best a lot of, of luck. Nice okay. All right, we have our final contestant in the individual category. Her name is Shirley Flowers. She's an Amherst Lions Club member of three years, and her hobbies are gardening, growing her own vegetables, and then using them in recipes like she has here today. So step on up. I make it based on what I've learned from my husband. He's He's the chili man in our family and um, makes 
you know, the, the hotter, better chili, but I've tried to, I've learned from that, and I grew, we grow our own tomatoes, and I make um, salsa from our tomatoes, so I use some of that in this recipe. And um, we also grow our own habaneros and jalapenos. So um, I've mixed all those together and have come up with this recipe, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. It's not too hot at first. Uh, this is the way I like it. I like it to kick me afterward instead of as, as it's going down because then you can't can't. So. So we have multiple types of beans in here? Yes. Yeah. There's uh, the kidney beans, mm -hmm. garbanzo beans, black beans, and um, oh, and corn. Yeah. Corn's in there. And then what else is in there that's kind of like the ground up that's recreational? That is, <laughs> that is the veggie burger. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Yep. That makes it the, sure. um, so that works really well. Yeah, that's what I, I was guessing. I mean, you're using like a like an actual veggie burger crumbled up, or using some of the new. You can do it either stuff. way. Whatever you can beyond, find beyond at the meat. time. But yeah, <laughs> I usually buy. Um, I like to get the crumble. That way, you don't have to yeah. crumble it up. Yeah. But the burgers work as well. You crumble them up, but you know, I think it's a nice, you know, all things, especially if you're. You know, well, I think it's real nice. I don't think that. I mean. If people were given this and you didn't have your little speech, that they would it would take them a. They might not even guess. They might be five, six bites in when they might realize. Oh, yes. this? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. There might right. be. Right. Yeah. So that yeah. great. Good job. Yeah, I enjoyed making it, and I, like I said, I can eat it much easier. If I eat my husband's, I have to add sour cream and everything, <laughs> cornbread and everything. Mine just picks a little, and that's it. If you look. You want her donation on a chili recipe, vegetarian style? Hit number <coughs> seven and donate to go get that for the Lion's Sight and Hearing Foundation. That kind of wraps up our first category of individuals. We're going to let the judges collaborate over the scorecards and find out who we're going to crown our 2021 individual Lion's Chili Champion. All right. And after a couple minutes of deliberation and talking <laughs> things over, I think the judges have come to a conclusion. But before we announce the winner of this year's contest, we have Jay Smith who would like to uh, make a few, uh, mention a few things. I just want to say real quick that it was super close, like super close, and I thought you guys did a great job. I would eat any of those chilies again. It's, I, it's hard being, a, I've been on both sides of this bench, competing and judging. So like, trust me, I know like, yeah. I know both sides of this pretty well. But I just want to say, to everyone, great job. Really enjoyed all, all six chilies that we tasted today. Like I said, it was super cool, and it was super close on the judging. It most certainly was. All right, and the winner of the 2021 20, individual Lions Merrimack and Amherst Chili Champion is Chili number three, Brian Foster. Congratulations, Brian. You get to take this trophy home, and it's yours for a whole year. You can have rights. Thank you. Take pictures and share about it. Now, I just want to mention there was a close second up with the devil's dust. Um, <laughs> very close second with the devil's dust. The judges thought that that should be uh, bottled up and, and handled and, and passed out and around. <laughs> Uh, I like to talk about each one of these judges and see here, Crack's actually opening up a few new locations in the yeah. next few years. Yeah. So how's Crack handling opening up locations in the midst of a pandemic and yet finding solid employees? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously I think that as uh, the rest of the judges can kind of echo, you know, hiring right now is, is, is definitely a challenge. Um, you know, we are we are somewhat lucky that we're not in the full service map model. We're in the, the take up model, yes. um, so we don't have to worry as much about filling seats. Um, I think there's a little bit more of a sense of comfortableness, uh, you know, with the guests where they can pick up takeout and, and eat it in the comfort of their own homes. So Absolutely. we are a little bit lucky um, when it comes to that. But 
Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to find out here. We're, we're as, as you mentioned, we're opening a new location in Salem, New Hampshire, hopefully uh, mid-April. Awesome. Um, so we're going to see over the next few weeks here, especially uh, how, how that hiring process goes. But, you know, we, we think we have a compel compelling brand, a compelling product, and, you know, a fun place to work. So we hope that that's enough of a story to be able to attract the, the right talent to get the restaurant Absolutely. Open. I totally agree with that one. Thank you. And now, Jay, so you have a well-established uh, restaurant, Copper Door, uh, great uh, great restaurants. I'm sorry. Great, great New Hampshire restaurants. Great New Hampshire yeah, restaurants. Ten, ten restaurants in that in our family right now. So, so how is the, the family um, dealing with the pandemic and keeping all these restaurants open? Um, yeah, it's it definitely was a challenge. Obviously, like you were saying, the first you know it was a year ago now, which seems absolutely crazy. Okay. Almost a year ago. So, you know, the first three or four months it was real hard because you know we have about somewhere between eight and nine hundred employees. Yeah. I would say you know amongst the restaurants. At the time this started, we actually only had nine restaurants. We opened the 10th five months ago in Concord. So, uh, you know, we had to lay off like 750 employees like, last March, and that's really brutal, like just brutal to have to do that. Um, fortunately, you know, some PPP monies came through, and we were able to withstand the, the takeout-only situation until June and get some bodies back in the restaurant cooking. Um, but uh, honestly, our success is is – really is twofold, threefold really. It's our leadership team and our owners work tirelessly to, to keep the restaurants running. We have an amazing loyal clientele that came and ate and got takeout night after night after night. We, the same people would just come and get takeout and, and just really support us and our staff leaving ridiculously large tips with the hostess that we mm -hmm. pooled together and, and divided amongst our entire staff. And um, our employees just being able to be flexible and just understanding that, hey, you know, this week we can only give you 10 hours, but next week we're hoping to give you 15, and then the week after we're hoping to give you 25. Right. And uh, just trying to be as supportive as we can. And I, I think we've been super successful. Uh, we learned a lot about ourselves. We, you know, the Copper Door was never a takeout restaurant, and now we're, we have a booming takeout business, you That's know, great. because of this. And, you know, like I learned a lot of the stuff on the fly, but but it's all, it's been a success, and we're, Feeling pretty optimistic about 2021 and getting back to normal. Phenomenal. And one thing in the kitchens, so you're always going to adjust to change the conditions. Mm -hmm, you know, so that's one thing as a chef we can do on the fly. Right. And again, it starts with great leadership, as you mentioned. Starts at the top, and I mm -hmm. think if you can have a good foundation there, mm -hmm. the rest will follow. And now, Dan, you got a mobile food truck. You yep. take the barbecue pit on road. Is that right? That's right. So, what's the difference between having um, your business on wheels and being able to be mobile? I think that this is could be where, uh, a direction where food's going, yep, and yep. I, I think you got something here. So talk to us how you're dealing with the pandemic on Sure, weeks. sure. So, uh, you know, a lot of it was a shock, uh, I think, to all of us uh, back in March when, when everything shut down. You know, January, February, March, those are times that usually a food truck like mine is booking all those events in the summer, yep. booking uh, weddings and graduations and, you know, retirement parties and everything else. So we were shape enough to have a great 2020, <laughs> right? Just like everybody else. And then within, you know, a couple weeks, just email after email after email came in, canceled, 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 pushed out, you know, to 2021. So within a matter of a couple weeks, 100% of my business was, you know, off the board. Uh, so we, we had previously done, just to kind of fill dates, we would do some roadside, uh, you know, pick a busy road, uh, go in a parking lot, do some social media, uh, you know, folks would come get some takeout. Uh, so we pivoted to that. You know, again, it was a very small part of our revenue uh, going into 2020, and then it became all of our revenue in 2020. Uh, so it was definitely a learning experience. Uh, just trying to figure out what works. I had to change over the menu. Uh, serving at a fair is much different than yeah. serving family meals going home. Right. So your, your whole menu has to shift uh, to, to, you know, the, the client's needs. Uh, so that was a lot of it. Um, we did have great support from the community. Uh, folks would would come, get some barbecue, post some really nice things online. Yeah. Helped immensely. Uh, you know, definitely getting the word out there that we were there, and we slowly built a following. And uh, you know, now we're pretty doing pretty steady. Uh, you know, now with things looking up, we're starting to we're starting to book out again. It's like the floodgates just opened. Right. Uh, people are really feeling optimistic about later in the year. Yeah. So they're starting to book. You know, all the things that were held off last year, they're, they're getting in touch with us and starting to fill up the calendar nice. So 
2021 might actually be a really stellar year because all that pent up demand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're really hopeful for, for this year. And uh, we, we definitely learned a lot. Awesome. So you heard it here first, folks. You know, the restaurants are adapting and changing. They're making sure they can produce a high quality product for the customers. So let's go out there and show them the same exact support. And if you're still wary on going out there, purchase some gift cards, right guys? Absolutely. Gift cards are a way to go right here. And now we have our first contestant up in the Lions Club category in the Lions Chili Contest. Our first contestant is Michelle DiChara. She's been cooking for over 45 years, and she's been a Lions Club charter member for 40 plus years as well. She's got a wonderful chili to present, and she's also owned her own breakfast restaurant in the town of Merrimack for many years as well. Hi, right, Michelle. Now, tell us what makes this chili special and so unique. Well, it's actually uh, a journey of chilies that began back in the 1960s. <laughs> Um, with eating my mother's chili made from Campbell's condensed tomato soup and beans, you know, in those days. Mm -hmm. Traveling on to that, to Lake Havasu City in Arizona for the semifinals of the International Chili Cook-Off with my husband. We really fell in love with chili and came back and tried to develop our own. Entered a, a local contest and did very well in that. And bought a restaurant in Merrimack and used to serve chili as one of our homemade soups or chilies that we would do. My husband did it, that was his thing, and I just kind of stayed and didn't really do anything with that. But um, we, uh, the Merrimack Lions actually had a chili cook-off a few years back, and unfortunately it was the weekend that Mother Nature decided to cause a, ma a Mother's Day flood in Merrimack and surrounding areas, and so the chili cook-off didn't go so well, it sort of got flooded out. But. Um, it's been, um, you know, a love of chili. In 2019, unfortunately, I lost my husband, and um, so I passed on his chili recipe to a, a young, energetic chef who did quite well with developing it and changing it for himself. And um, I decided to maybe try to develop a, a healthier version, vegetarian, and try to evolve into that. So that's what you're eating today. So a vegetarian chili. It's again. vegetarian. It's done okay. with all roasted vegetables. And um, I tell you, I took that top off, and boom, I got that beautiful. You know, like it was, it was uh, about, a, about two feet away from me. <laughs> and I took the top off, and I just smelled beautiful. So right out of the gate, love that. And the little muffins are spicy corn muffins that you know, chili has to have some kind of a corn. Mm. Bread components. Absolutely. Great. Now, as Michelle did mention, and as the judges take in this mm -hmm. chili here, I did take part of her chili recipe as my first addition into last year's competition and just enhanced some of those flavors, brought in some different culinary techniques and tricks, and uh, it took the cake last year. And so, much respect to uh, your chili for helping me. Frank's chili. Frank's chili. Yeah. You know, much respect to Frank. Uh, Alan, yeah, no, it's great. <clears throat> um, I, I, I agree. Uh, Dan, it smells, it smells wonderful when you first take it off. It's very interesting, too. There's a lot going on in here, a lot of different textures, different flavors. It's, uh, it's really good. Yeah, I agree. I love the, that the vegetables are cut a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. It gives you, you really pick out the individual, like the flavor of the carrot and the onion and the last of it definitely says I love corn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love corn. So mm -hmm. the corn in there is just great because it's a little like fresh bites of like sweetness mm -hmm. like mixed in in with it. I charred the corn. Yeah, and I love that. So it's one of my favorites. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well. nice. Well, fantastic, Michelle. I think you presented a great chili to okay. the judges. All right, and our next contestant up in the Lions Club category is Amherst Lions Club member Richard Ball. He's a charter cl uh, Lions Club member of 49 years, and his favorite club project is the pancake breakfast. So, Richard, go ahead and present your chili to the judges. Certainly. Thank uh, you. Look at this. Service at its finest, right off the table. Table side service. I love it. 
Is that enough? Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Now, in case for you guys who don't know what a charter member is in the Lions Club, it's, it's a member who started the club originally from the beginning. Isn't that right, Richard? That is correct. That is correct. So tell us what you served up here. I love the style right out of the thermos. Sure. Um, about the chili, we've been serving since 1972 when we were chartered. We've been serving food or doing something every year. Awesome. And slowly but surely, the number of things we've done have grown. And somewhere along the line, we had a Lioness Club. And the Lioness Club started a craft fair the first, first Saturday in, in, uh, in uh, December. And they used to provide food for the people and everything. And somewhere in there, the Lions Club got involved with the Lioness Club. Yeah. And then they later disbanded because of requirements from Lions International. But uh, I've been making chili for them ever since. And we serve it with the, uh, you know, with the hot dogs and the sandwiches yep. and everything else at, at, that, at that point. And the chili itself is kind of evolved, like all chili tends to do. Yep. And it's probably a standard chili con carne. And I guess it should say uh, for holies, because there's, there's beans in it. <laughs> and uh, I, I wrote my recipe, which is available. And the recipe uh, specifies beans, and it suggests that you make them from uh, dried beans. And, soak them and parboil them, but uh, I didn't specify this particular chili has black beans in it, and I really like the black beans because they, they have a better taste to me. They don't fall apart, but yet they're nice and, nice and soft. But you can go with kidney beans or anything else. Yeah. You probably notice it's kind of chunky. I also believe in that. And when I make it my five gallon, or really four gallon, in a five gallon can, yeah. uh, presentation, which I do when we have it for a large group of people, what I do is I put it in the oven overnight at 210 degrees and cook it for 10 to 12 hours. Interesting. Like and it never sticks to the pot, <laughs> which is a good thing. And it also helps everything infuse into each other, all of the sure, peppers. And I think it gets right into the beef and the beans absorb a lot of that flavor. And yeah, in there. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's how, how it's evolved, and uh, unfortunately, we did not have a Christmas fair this year. Right. But uh, we're hoping for the future, and uh, I don't know if I can tell you anything else about the club. Others are very, very active. We have about 50 members, and we have never repeated a, a president. Wow. In the 50 years, oh, 49 years that we've been in existence, we've had 49 different presidents. Very good, Richard. I love that. So let's see what the judges have to say about your chili then. This is uh, very good. I, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Um, really nice ratio uh, to meat. I, I, I'm a meat guy. I enjoy, I enjoy it. And uh, I like that the meat is uh, on the forefront here in this dish. Um, also, you, you definitely, you said that you use dried beans with this. and. Yeah. You know, you, you definitely can tell the difference with this. I like the texture of the bean. It's not completely broken down. It's not mushy. It still has a nice bite to it. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Really well done. Thank you. Yeah, you pretty much nailed it. This is a classic bowl of chili. It's yeah. great. It's, uh, he said it's a great ratio of meat to the beans. You can tell that the beans are started uh, from the hard stage. Nice pieces of pepper in there. A nice little liquid in there. We were kind of talking about that before. Sometimes... To me, it's like I like to take the lid off a pot of chili that's on the stove, and I like to see that shimmering little layer of, you know, it's fat, man. It's from the it's flavor. It, like, sits in there, and everything's stewing around in there, and yeah. that's what you get when you look into this bowl, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah good homey chili, you know. Yeah. It's classic, what you what you really want, or what, what you're expecting when you go for a bowl of chili, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the ratios are right on, like these guys were saying, and... Really like it all around. Yeah, I, I usually use a fairly high fat content meat, yeah. mm -hmm. and then after I get done cooking it, I skim off the fat at the very end, so that at least some of the flavor gets mixed in with it, but you get rid of some of the calories. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our next Lions Club contestant. He's representing the Merrimack Lions Club Defending Chili Champions of 2020. Uh, he is the manager at the mile away, and he's serving his second year as a Lions Club social media and tech support. His name is Kyle Altman. So first and foremost, this has a bit of assembly required. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do 
is uh, Adam and I were on a, uh, a local TV show recently where we were showing things you can do with uh, uh, your vegetable scraps. Yeah. And I know a lot of us in the pandemic have been uh, doing more gardening, been baking more bread and things like that, but uh, uh, the worst feeling I ever have is when I go to my fridge and, uh, oh, that uh, uh, vegetable in the back of the drawer you forgot about, it's gone bad. Mm -hmm. So we need to find other ways uh, to, uh, to use things so, uh, while they're still fresh, especially if we're growing it ourselves. So what we did here, live on the air, was uh, we pickled some carrots, onions, and jalapenos. And plating tweezers might not have been the best choice, but for grabbing it all, but let's see. And uh, what, what we always love to do is use as much local ingredients, a a anything that we can uh, make ourselves, grow ourselves, uh, while at the same time supporting local businesses. So uh, on this show, we went over how to make the pickle and the brine that we used, instead of sugar, we actually used Vermont maple syrup. <laughs> And with the Vermont maple syrup, uh, just some white distilled vinegar that you can just get from the school store. Maybe you even have it as a cleaning product. Yeah. Now, that's just the garnish on there. The meat that we use, we decided to use beef cheek because that's the meat we used in last year's chili that won. That's correct. And uh, what I like to do uh, with my chili is I, I don't really like the one pot wonder kind of approach. I like to cook everything separately, very differently, and then bring it together and you have more layered flavors. Mm -hmm. So uh, the only uh, spice that we have in this chili is a fermented chili paste that is a Korean paste called goji chang. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna allow a really slow burn because mm -hmm. I myself, I'm not the biggest fan of hot, uh, spicy food, but whenever you're going into like, if you're gonna jump in, you want it to be a slow burn. You don't want it to just hit you right in the face. Mm -hmm. And uh, to kind of offset it, when you first taste it, it's gonna seem like it might be a little underwhelming, and then it'll just slowly, gradually crescendo a little bit. And the way we were able to do that was uh, adding some fruit, which a lot of a lot of people don't necessarily add fruit to chili. So uh, I have this uh, figs cocktail bitters. That was actually made by my close friends with uh, Dahlia Nomadic Restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, 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 another restaurant that just opened during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, they actually gave me this as a Christmas gift. So uh, thank you, Matt and Lauren. Is that <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. And uh, I always try to incorporate something that I grew myself uh, on my farm, Burns Crop Farm. Last year, we had some uh, paprika that I grew in my greenhouse, mm -hmm. uh, dehydrated and ground up. Uh, uh, as the seasoning, but my greenhouse collapsed last year and I wasn't able to rebuild it. So I actually have some uh, plums that I uh, grew from the trees I got with King Street Vineyards in Milford. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a couple years, they've actually been salt curing to make my own sort of homemade umabushi, which is uh, 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 a more Japanese flavor for a salted plum. And that's one of the two salts that we're using. So. I'll let, I'll let you guys dig in, and uh, uh, I, I always prefer potato bread over cornbread. That's just my, my Midwest thing. We, we, we go more <laughs> potato bread than cornbread. Now, while the judges take in that mouthful right there, mm -hmm. you know, that's one thing I love about Kyle and why we hit it off when we first met in the kitchen. His expertise, his knowledge of food, especially where I was at that point in time when we met as a chef, I was just absorbing knowledge. They didn't know much about celiac. Knew a little bit about gluten-free from our past, and you taught me a lot about that, Alan. Mm -hmm. And he just brought me into the next level of awareness. And uh, I think uh, when you're dealing with food and celiac and uh, gluten-free diseases, mm -hmm. it's all about handling it correctly. I've learned a lot from him when it comes to that. So, you know, let's start with Dan this time. Dan, down there, what do you think about this chili? I'm still, you know, it's you're right. It, it takes some time to, like, I'm starting to feel a little bit. You know, it's nice. It's uh, it's it, it, struggling to, to place all the flavors. I, I have so much that's going on. It's it, it's really pleasant. 
brightens up right at the end, and, and because it doesn't start off hot, that's why I like to put mm -hmm. uh, the pickled veg uh, on top right away, because then you get the acidity, rather than it just tasting, oh, I'm not sure where everything is until it uh, uh, f fully forms. Yeah. I think you mentioned uh, the depth of flavor. You definitely accomplished that. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on, um, and I completely agree. It's it's hearty, it's rich, and the pickled vegetables on top definitely kind of balance it out and, and kind of cut through some of that, which is is, is definitely good. Yeah, I, I picked up uh, before you kind of even started talking about it. Just in the aroma, I knew there was something a little different. At first, I thought it was cocoa, but it, it wasn't. I'm pretty sure it was. There, there is some dark chocolate in there. Okay. So I picked up the dark chocolate yeah. first on the cocoa, and uh, I was like, "Cool, I like that." And then, but the first taste, I hit the fermentation. Just I'm a, yeah. without delving too far into it, my background in culinary is Asian. Goat mm. is amazing. I use it a lot. <laughs> I can taste it in here. I love it. <laughs> and, and I, I, I did hear a, a comment earlier on rye bread. So um, uh, I, I use two very specific forms of salt. I use the. Um, uh, the salt I use to create the umabushi, so mm -hmm. the umabushi salt's in there. And then I also have uh, Red Boat salt, which is, Red Boat is a brand of uh, uh, barrel-aged fish sauce. And what they do after uh, they drain the barrel, they will scrape off the salt from the inside of the barrel, and it kind of has a, a, a whiskey oak kind of uh, uh, umami flavor to it. So I used the, uh, um, I, I, I used the Red Boat salt, in the beef cheeks, and then I use the omobushi salt for the beans and the vegetables. Yeah. Phenomenal. So in case you don't know, now you know. <laughs> um, Kyle, thank you so much for that great presentation and, and culinary tutorial, if you will. Yeah, really good. <laughs> All right, and finally, our last contestant for the Lions Club category is Mike Sills, a member of the Lions Club for 30 plus years. And in his free time, he's skiing and fishing. And he's also written a cookbook. So oh, I yes. think we've got something up our sleeves right here that might be, uh, it's smelling real good. So my name is Mike Sills. The name of our uh, chili is Skip's, what's the third over there? Skip's Super Bowl chili. Skip's okay. Super Bowl chili. And what happened, we all moved into the area in around 1976. And there was a group of four couples that became close friends. As it turns out, a lot of us were in the military during the big war. And some of us were involved with cooking. Uh, myself, I was a mess officer. I was supposed to be counting missiles, but I loved that job. My men had a little plaque they put up finally. I was there so much. Mike wouldn't let his men eat anything. He wouldn't eat twice. So, you know, it, it got rolling. And what I have done here is... The other fellow in our group is Skip, the creator of this, uh, was in the Coast Guard. Is anybody here familiar with the Coast Guard cooking? Yeah, okay, it's the best in the world. And I'm telling you, past Princess, past Norwegian, past them all. Terrific cooking, no one knows about it. But uh, Army cooking is just solid. So it's like, you know, the, uh, the, the Red Arrow meets uh, the five-star restaurant. So if you flip your first page, mm -hmm. you'll see, uh, I've left you a copy of the actual field manual we still use today from World War II of uh, cooking. And it, it shows you, you know, the range of things that we have done in military cooking. It goes uh, from uh, you know, chicken fricassee and the chili in that is on the other side. It's kind of, kind of crude uh, compared to what we're listening to tonight. But that's my end of the spectrum. Now, Skips is the Coast Guard, and I couldn't get their manual because, you know, them. Uh, but I picked a cruise line that I thought was close enough and had all the things they have. So the next page is the luncheon menu from the Titanic on the day it was sunk. And it has all the stuff in there. <laughs> it's a collector's item. You don't want to know how I got that. Uh, it, it, it has everything in there that I would expect on a Coast Guard cutter. If you're caviar and they're up in Alaska, they'll get it, no matter what you say. They have sticky buns for coffee break, things like that. So we started with that group. We had a team. I took chili granules, and my wife took cheese and chila uh, chicken enchiladas, but Skip took chili. And this was the Chicago Bears. You weren't even born. Your parents might not even have been born for the Chicago Bears massacre. Okay, okay. 
And it was like, what do we make all this food for? So we got down to four items that we love, and Skips was the chili guy. And the, the, the key thing about, about his chili is he starts with a, with a roast, and not with a chopped up hamburger. Mm -hmm. And he has the butcher chop that up from scratch. Uh, a lot of professionals don't like the idea of bacon in, in their chili. Eh, so we said, nah, we don't care. Um, the other thing was the beans. Uh, I've always used kidney because I like them. But he insists on the, the, uh, the Stewart beans and the Pinto beans because they have thinner shells. Mm -hmm. They cook better, cook through easier uh, as, as a thing. And then he's got so much ketchup and so much beef broth, I couldn't believe it. Um, we get down to uh, all the different ingredients you can see on that list are fairly typical. And then uh, at the end, we put the beans in, as you know, about a half hour before we be ready to eat. And then before you actually serve, you put in... Uh, a couple of tablespoons of, of uh, cider vinegar. I don't know if you've done that in your lives or, or what, what happens, but uh, it really works. It's worked for the Coast Guard, so it can't be too bad. Uh, are there any questions? No, that was great. Uh, yeah, great presentation. It's interesting information. <laughs> well, you know, I expect you to take it back and look at the field manual and say, I want to see more of these recipes. Maybe I can do something in my restaurant. <laughs> you know, well, you know, this is, this is a, a, a meal they ate at the Battle of the Bulge, and they actually probably oh, yeah. did, you know, if you get going. The, the other thing, I don't think you want to do cruise ship things, but I thought that Titanic's yeah. menu was, <laughs> of course, it's the first class people. <laughs> All right, so skip super, skip super Bowl chili is going to be chili number 13 when it comes to the donation page. If you like Skip's recipe and you want more and you want to try it yourself, that's going to be chili number 13. Judges, we have any comments, feedback on this? Exactly what you expect from you know, like when you think chili, this is what you think. Okay. You know, it's classic. Don't say that because he has missiles, though. <laughs> 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 no, but it, you know, it's spot it on. It, you know, we've, like, we've it's exactly it what you think. You know, chili. Since the slaughter, you know. Yeah. And we've won six Super Bowls or seven. I can't even remember. You know, Brady's is yeah. now with Patriots Light in our in our land the, the Buccaneers. Yes, consistency is perfect. It's <clears throat> like. Not too thick, not too thin. The yeah. meats cook great. We can, bacon is great. I don't care what people well, think. Thank you very I'm much. Bacon in this. Bacon in that. It just we try to participate in as many of these yeah. fundraisers. We, no one really wants to go through the trouble. But um, when we get to the professionals like yourselves, there's a lot of bacon negativity. And people should be saving like bacon. Oh, they really should. You, should know? you, know, you can't yeah. buy yeah. happiness, but you can buy bacon. Yes, and you can't have enough potato chips or bacon. <laughs> We're going to get let the judges go into the lion's den to deliberate, and we'll find out who's going to take the... All right. We got word from the judges that they came to a decision on who's going to take home the Chili Bowl this year for the Lions Club. And we had four very well-represented Lions Club contestants this year. I think we should all give them a round of applause. Yeah. 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 All right. I didn't want to be informed on the winner since I was last year's winner, so I love... For Chef Jay Smith, that is the one to present the winner of this year's 2021 Fire and Ice Lions Chili mm. Cook Off. All right. I'm happy to announce that the winner of this awesome little trophy, after a pretty good deliberation, because these these four chilies were great. It was this was tougher than the last round for sure. Wow. A lot tougher. A lot of great flavor profiles, presentations, creativity. Everything was was top notch. But uh, our decision is going to be number 13. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. really? Yeah. I can eat every day. I'll tell you, I can't tell you how happy we are. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's really an honor for everybody. Congratulations. Congratulations. There we go. Holy right. schmoly! <laughs> I'm gonna tell Skip we didn't finish and then just take it. <laughs> Want to say thank you to all three judges who joined us here tonight: Chef Jay Smith of the Coffador, Alan Pratty of Kraft, and Dan Del Corsi of Up in Your Grill Catering. Uh, if you liked any or all of these recipes, and you'd like to take them home, you can find them out 
on our Clubhouse website. That's www.e slash clubhouse slash site slash Amherst, New Hampshire. You go on there, you click the donation button, and you can support the local Chili's and the Lions Clubs you've seen in today's event and help support the Lions Club Sight and Hearing Foundation. You can find the video once we're done editing it up on YouTube and Facebook. And help us please share this video with your friends and family around. And also, check out the YouTube page Jump Town, and you'll find more videos quite like this in the next upcoming years. Until next time, we're going to keep the quality high while we continue to serve our communities. Thank you.